Hi, I'm uh, Steve Casbell from Atlanta. Uh, my question involves interest rates. Uh, when you calculate the intrinsic value of a business and a period of low interest rates like we have currently, do you use a higher discount rate to factor in higher rates in the future? And also, um, when, do you ever look at a company's free cash flow yield relative to current rates? And if I could also get your thoughts on the uh, dividend tax cut, if by some miracle the politicians think logically and get rid of the dividend uh, taxes, would Berkshire ever pay a dividend? The question on discount rates, we, um, we use the same discount, I mean, in theory, we would use the same discount rate across all securities, because if you really knew the cash they were going to produce, you know, that would, that would take care of it. We may be more conservative in estimating the returns of cash from some, but the, the, the discount rate we would use is a constant. Now, in terms of where we commit, you know, we don't want to use the fact that short-term rates are one and a quarter percent to think that something that yields us 3% or 4% is a good deal. So we sort of have a minimum threshold in our mind about which we're, below which we're unwilling to commit money. And we're unwilling to commit it whether interest rates are 6 or 7% or whether they're 3 or 4% or whether they're on a short-term basis 1%. We just, we don't want to get hooked into long-term investments at low rates just because they're a little bit better than, than short rates would be or, or low government rates would be. So we, we, we have minimum thresholds in our mind. I can't tell you precisely what they are, but they're, uh, they're a whole lot higher than present government rates would be. And at other times, we'd be very happy owning governments just because we feel that they offer attractive enough rates. Uh, um, I would, when we're looking at a business, we're looking at holding it forever. And, and we want to be sure we're getting an adequate return on capital. We don't regard what we can get on short-term rates now as adequate, but we'll still sit bend you know, a little bit and start settling for lower rates for 30 years because rates for 30 days are so low, we would rather just sit it out and wait a while. Um, the tax on dividends, uh, you know, I've used this illustration before, but I'm paying about the same percentage of my income to the federal government as my secretary does. Now, I pay more in income tax rates than she does. I pay a higher marginal tax rate by some margin than she does, but she pays way more in social security taxes than I do because I only pay out the first, whatever it is, 70 or 80,000 of income. And so she is paying between what we pay at the company for and what she pays, we're paying 12 or 13 percent or whatever it is of that. So we both end up paying fairly similar percentages of our income to the federal government every year. If Berkshire were to declare a billion dollar dividend and my share of it was 330 million and it were tax free uh, as the Bush people originally suggested and, and it would be tax free. I mean, we have lots of taxable earnings at Berkshire. You know, I might be paying one tenth of the rate to the federal government of my income that she would be. Now I can make the argument about the fact that structure shouldn't govern tax rates, that that subchapter S and subchapter and chapter C and partnerships and all of these things, that the tax code should be neutral between them. And I've made those kind of arguments in the past. But I can make no argument in my mind that says that I, with everything that, you know, all the luck I've had in life, you know, I was wired a certain way at birth that enabled me to make a lot of money. And frankly, it was better to be born a boy than a a girl in terms of money-making possibilities in 1930, and probably still is, but not to the same degree. I mean, the fact that, that I would send one-tenth the portion of my income in a year to the federal government that my secretary would, I, it just it's, it screams at injustice to me in, in terms of what the society gives back to me. So, so I, am not, I am not for the, I'm not for the Bush plan. But, um, Charlie? Well, I, I agree with you. Even if you assume that the, the whole economy would work better if we'd never gotten into this double taxation system on corporate earnings, which I don't think is a clear thing anyway, but even if you, even if you assume that, I think when you live in a democracy where there's lots of envy and resentment and what have you, to have the 
absolutely most fortunate people paying practically no income taxes, uh, I, I just think it's unacceptable. I think there has to be some fairness in, in, uh, in some of these arrangements, uh, even if there's some theoretical argument that the economy might work a little better some other way. Yeah, there are IRAs now, obviously, that work very well for people with modest amounts of dividends, that they, they're getting de tax deferred for a very long period of time, which has huge benefits. The big benefits of exempting dividends would go to fellows like me and Charlie, you know, and that's not going to stimulate the economy, it's going to stimulate us, but, uh, and it's going to result in us sending a very small percentage of the income of our income to Washington compared to what the people you know working in our shoe factory send and uh, that you know when somebody says you know what did you do during the war grandpa I'm not sure that's what I want to explain to them <laughs> number three